their records and saying, okay, who lost their flag that day? And by putting the, the two sides together, and frequently it's diaries and letters that you have to, to get into is to figure out uh, where the flags came from. At any rate, uh, this presentation was originally put together by our flag curator, so she had to finish with a woman, so i got to finish with the woman, and she's weeping there or something, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think she's just read the letter that says your son has died. Uh, but at any rate, that's, that's the, uh, the end of the talk. Uh, and I'd uh, you know, be pleased to answer uh, questions either about the Museum of the Confederacy or our flag collection or the Confederate flag is a, is a you know, it, it is a controversial topic today. Yes, ma'am? So why do you think our common image of the Confederate flag has persisted when that actual flag wasn't in the Confederate flag? It's a great question. In, 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 in uh, basketball lore, you just threw me an alley-oop. Um, <laughs> that Confederate flag that is so controversial today, the rectangular version, its major use was right after World War II, uh, first by Strom Thurmond and his Dixiecrat party, and then during the massive resistance, segregation now, segregation forever fights uh, that led up to the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Okay, that flag was used in the third iteration of the uh, Ku Klux Klan. It was their flag. Ku Klux Klan was alive and well right after the war uh, in the South, uh, kind of died came back strong in Ohio and Indiana and Illinois in 1910, resisting the, the migration of, of African Americans from southern farms to northern factories, died out, came back strong again in the 1940s and 1950s. So that flag, if, if you're an African American today, you don't care about soldiers in the Civil War carrying flags. You care intensely about segregationist white supremacists in the 1940s and 50s carrying that flag. Okay, So the, the controversy of that flag is far more a function of our, the, the not you, but a lot of people in the room, our lifetime, uh, uh, not something that was going on in the uh, 1860s in the American Civil War. Yes, sir. Many, many of the flags you showed had 13 stars. Some had less than 13 stars. What account? What were the 13 stars? Uh, it's a great question. Most people say, you know, 11 states seceded. Uh, seven states seceded. That, uh, after uh, Lincoln was elected, uh, southern states started seceding. Bam, bam, bam. South Carolina first. Seven states seceded. And then it stopped in a number of states in the middle. And it was the far south that seceded. Because the uh, principal reason for their secession was slavery. Don't let anybody kid you. It was slavery. If you read the letters and documents and speeches of the time, it was slavery. Okay, the, the middle states, uh, many of them, like my home state of Virginia, had a convention and voted not to secede. They said, you know, I'm uh, more loyal to the Union than I am to uh, the, the, uh, uh, the issues that uh, forced South Carolina to secede. Okay. You then have Fort Sumter. And I'm up here in Rhode Island, so I won't say anything obnoxious like Lincoln precipitated the Civil War by leading to the bombardment of Fort Sumter. Thank you. Okay. Um, but so I, I wouldn't say anything like that up here. Thank you again. Uh, but after Fort Sumter, Lincoln then says okay, I need troops to put down the rebellion and put out a call for troops uh, across the country. Now, four more states seceded, uh, right? And because of the call for troops, Virginia, North Carolina, Arkansas, and Tennessee seceded after having decided not to before. Next one up was Maryland. They're going to vote. Uh, Lincoln was a smart guy. He's a fabulous politician. He counts noses the night before the secession vote, and he goes, going to lose. And man, that's going to hurt to lose Maryland, because if we lose Maryland, we also lose Washington, D.C. 
So he uh, suspended the writ of habeas corpus and put through a bunch of guys in jail that night that were going to vote to secede. Threw enough in jail to kill the majority, but not so many as to kill the quorum. And then they had to vote the next day. I mean, he threw Francis Scott Key's grandson in jail, for crying out loud. That, you know, uh, so Maryland voted miraculously to stay in the Union. Next up, uh, Missouri. Now, they knew what had happened in Maryland, and they didn't throw anybody in jail, but they did have an armed guard standing by each person as they cast their vote. Okay, so Missouri voted to stay in the Union. And immediately after that, a delegation reconstituted themselves as the legislature of Missouri and said, we're going to secede. Okay, that group of Missourians was recognized by the Confederate Congress and seated in Congress. So there were uh, congressmen from Missouri in the U.S. Congress and in the Confederate Congress. So that's up to 12 states now. Kentucky had seen what happened in Maryland, had seen what happened in uh, 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 Missouri, and Kentucky's vote was to stay neutral. Uh, that's a concept that makes no sense whatsoever today, stay neutral, because you can't stay neutral unless you're sovereign. Aha! Kentucky thought it was a sovereign, so they wanted to pull a Switzerland and stay neutral. Now, a group of Kentuckians were unhappy with that result and seceded, and the Confederate Congress recognized them. So there was your 13th state and therefore the 13th star. Now, Delaware was the only remaining state, slave state, but it did not uh, ever have a secession vote. Uh, another trivia question for you. Does anybody know when and where the last slave sale was in the United States? Hmm. Wilmington, Delaware, four months after the end of the Civil War. Because Lincoln had never emancipated those slaves. Lincoln did not emancipate the slaves in the territories controlled by Lincoln. He only emancipated the slaves in the territories that he did not control. So slaves in Delaware, slaves in Maryland, slaves in Kentucky, slaves in Norfolk, Virginia, were still slaves after the Emancipation Proclamation. So the last slave sale uh, was, so that's the 13 states. Long, long answer to a short question. Uh, hang on just one second. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, how many were sold and at what prices? I don't know. <laughs> oh, really? I haven't got a clue. He said how many were sold and at what price and I haven't got a clue. Yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering, um, as a museum, who do you guys think of as your a lot of museums talk about yeah yeah that uh, that is a very good question and, and you know I hope you've been studying museum studies or something because that is a very good question um, much to my surprise when I took the job I was afraid that both the staff and the visitors and the members would be good old boys in pickup trucks with the wrong Confederate flag on their bumpers. Um, but they're, they're not. The, uh, we've got a very broad constituency. That the, Our membership spans 50 states and 20 foreign countries. 10% of our visitors from, are from abroad. The month of September, we had more visitors from England than any other state in the country other than Virginia. Um, our uh, members, only 22% of our members even live within an hour of Richmond. Um, it in the past generation, we have gone through a transition from being a Confederate shrine, if you will, to being a legitimate history museum. And so uh, our large states for visitors, uh, our number two state for visitors is California. Our number three state is New York. Our number four state is Florida, and it might be south of Virginia, but it's not a su southern state. Uh, our number six state in long-term uh, uh, visitorship, you know, uh, statistics is England. Uh, Texas gets in there, so it, it 